Greeting shippers, welcome back, and it's time once more to talk about The Umbrella Academy. We've discussed this series twice before now. Once just a general video, an overview of the shipping in general and some of the taboos that have been occurring inside of the fandom, and another dedicated video to Luther and Allison specifically, and some of the qualms that people had with that pairing and why some enjoyed it. So if you missed either of those, you know the drill. Click the card or the links will be down below. For this video, we're going to dive into a specific fandom phenomenon that can attach itself to many different fandoms, but is happening very strongly inside of this fandom, and that is the phenomenon of character bashing. For those who don't know, character bashing is the process wherein a certain character is derided and just, well, very much put upon by people creating fan works. A character that fans just do not like, and at times will go out of their way to make sure is depicted negatively in their stories, sometimes at length. This can occur whether a character quote unquote deserves it or not. It has to do with how the character comes to be perceived by the fandom. It is not always universal. At times, fandoms can even be split, an example being what occurred after Captain America Civil War. For this video, we'll be taking a look at the character to be bashed in the Umbrella Academy fandom, that of Luther Hargreaves. However, before we get started, if you haven't already, please do follow on social media to stay up to date, know when we're streaming, and just come on over and chit chat about fandom. It's a good time, I swear. This video is going to function as a bit of an in defense of Luther vid, for the reasons why people do not like Luther are very much out there. So let us focus on some of the things that can be appealing about the character and why character bashing, if taken too far, can be very damaging to fandom and fans themselves. First up, a little bit of backstory for those who are not overly familiar with the material. The Umbrella Academy was a recent Netflix TV series adapted off of the comic series of the same name, or at least partially of the same name. It was longer in the comic series. The series centers around the Hargreaves siblings or family, though some will quibble about whether or not they truly have very familial ties. These characters, all born the same day, possess a specific character trait or a power. They were all taken in by an eccentric billionaire who decided to try and cultivate them and make them a superhero team. However, in the process, he created a truly dysfunctional environment, which left them all scarred in various ways. As adults, they now struggle to find their way through the world with various dysfunctional relationships and also they have to stop the apocalypse. That is the extremely Cliff Notes non-spoiler version. So where does Luther fall in all of this? Well, Luther is the sibling designated as number one, a moniker that has 100% gone to his head. Luther operates very much in the role of eldest, whether that is technically true or not. He has many of the character traits of an eldest or leader. He has been groomed and sculpted to be the leader of the team from childhood, and it is a responsibility that he very much takes seriously and has shaped his core identity around, a core identity without of which he's not exactly sure who he is or what to do with himself. As a result, he is very much a character who is always trying to assert his control and get the other characters to go along with his plans. Because of this, he can also at times be pedantic and overbearing. However, underneath all of this is a core of insecurity and also a softness that he very much tries to keep hidden. So let us quickly start with what exactly is it that people don't enjoy about this character, and then we will do some counterpoints as a counterbalance, then discuss bashing in general. For some, their dislike of the character stems from a very specific event that occurs near the series' end. This involves a betrayal of one of the siblings, specifically after they come to him for help. For many, this was the point where his character was completely cut off, irredeemable, they didn't want anything to do with him. For others, however, it started earlier. There were some who chafed at his authoritative attitude. There were others who felt that he was boring, that one comes up a lot. And others who were just sick and tired of hearing about the fact that he was on the moon. We get it you were on the moon. So with those laid out, let us get into some of the counterpoints. There are many who feel that people are missing out on some of the struggle with Luther's character, although they can understand why it is harder to identify with. For most people, they will often find themselves in conflict with authority rather than being the authoritative figure. As a result, the struggles of the authoritative figure can be a bit more difficult to identify with, especially as culturally many are trained to fight against that authoritative figure, or the idea that anybody in that position is inherently bad, negative, or not looking out for the people beneath them. However, there is an interesting tale to be told from that perspective. The struggle of knowing that one has a good solid plan and trying to get other people who are simply, let's face it, not very put together to go along with it. Also the struggle of having to make decisions, which is a very unique struggle all its own, particularly when one knows that it's going to have very real and lasting consequences for multiple individuals. And also the struggle of being the person who has to bring up unpopular topics 
topics or has to make unpopular decisions. While some feel that these decisions and topics can be avoided, others do not. So while it may not be a struggle everyone can identify with, it is definitely one with merit and nuance that could be very intriguingly explored. So there are some who could find themselves identifying with Luther, even with some of the more negative aspects, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people do have some uptight or overbearing tendencies, and that can be interesting to work through too. There were others who identified with Luther's hidden awkwardness, and also that very struggle of keeping it hidden, that kind of veneer of a very polished exterior, and the idea that one is in control, knows exactly what they're doing, when inside, no they do not. There were some who saw that in Luther, and felt that it could be very well explored. There is also the fact that one does not need to identify with a character based on who they are. This of course means identifying with their surface or visible traits, such as their gender, sexuality, race, etc. But instead, diving deeper into a more core struggle. As a result of this, some very much identified with Luther's struggle with his own body. The feeling that he's not at home in it, that it doesn't belong to him, that it's not right. This struggle can apply to many different types of people, and some found themselves identifying with that very strongly in Luther. It is here especially that some feel the chafing of the bonds of character bashing, as there are many who feel that they can't identify with Luther, or that they shouldn't, or that if they do, they will not have a place in the fandom. For as mentioned at the start of this, Luther character bashing is very rampant. He even has his own bashing tags, such as Luther is or not Luther friendly. And that is just to name a few of the more polite ones. As a result, some are frustrated and they feel that people are missing out or they fear that people are jumping into the fandom and seeing the fandom tidal wave and joining in on it rather than exploring some of the ideas they may have had. As one can often find themselves influenced by the overall tone of a fandom as it can color one's reading of things. Others fear that those coming from the fandom going into the show will have all of these reads placed upon them and as a result will not give the character a chance. Now, of course, it goes without saying, one doesn't have to like any character. But at the same time, they shouldn't judge others for liking or disliking a character either. For there are a select few, a subset, who very much judge those who enjoy Luther, implying that there is something wrong with them, or that they have interpreted the narrative incorrectly. This, of course, belies the fact that fandom is open for interpretation, that is one of the wonderful things about it, and that, of course, works themselves are open to multiple reads. A bit of a flip side of Luther character bashing is the universal Klaus love. There are some fans who also find themselves trapped in that regard in the opposite way, and being in a situation where they don't like Klaus, but feel they cannot express that sentiment either. In a sense, once a fandom becomes a place where a fan is uncertain whether they can express their feelings about a certain character or concept, it is unfortunately potentially heading down the road towards toxicity. Different strokes for different folks, and fandom can be fundum, but it is important to keep lines of communication open and be willing to accept that, hey, people like different things. Now, of course, there are some characters who will just find themselves being more disliked than others. It's a thing. It's fine. It happens. Just so long as those who do enjoy that character and do want to work with them also have space to do so, without any untoward judgment. It must be noted that there are some who dislike this character because of his race, gender, and sexuality. And they're bringing in certain societal expectations or biases or angers and projecting that onto the character. And it's also why some may find this character unsympathetic. Though of course, he does plenty to aid in that himself in the narrative. Now, there are some who feel that different types of characters are often more discriminated against than Luther, so who cares if in this one fandom he is the one getting the brunt of it? However, others feel that whenever snap judgments are made on characters based on those types of traits, it does the character a disservice, no matter who that character may be. When it comes to Luther character bashing, some of the disappointment also stems from the fact that they feel that it is unfair to separate Luther from the rest of his siblings in terms of the abuse they all suffered. Because Luther's actions are viewed as worse by some who view the series, they feel he is deserving of less sympathy. However, others feel that there is a narrative to be explored there, that the siblings were all pitted against each other by their father, and that he is just as much a victim of the manipulations and machinations of their father as all of the rest, and that he too is deserving of sympathy. And some would argue that, in fact, the very actions that he does perform stem directly from this, and so that is a very interesting angle to explore that many feel has not been explored because of the straight jump to character bashing. Another part of the trauma that many feel that fans are missing out on with Luther is the struggle of doing everything right or perceiving that they have done everything right, living their life by the rules only to find out that it didn't matter, that they have experienced the ultimate betrayal. That crushing sense of disappointment and realization that things weren't exactly how they thought they were is something that for some fans is quite compelling and worthy of exploration. In short, the argument can be summarized as those who want to explore the nuance, whether they enjoy Luther as a character or not, and those 
those who simply want, well, nothing to do with Luther. Whether Luther is a good or bad character is, of course, up to interpretation. However, what is not is that harassment of fans is never a good thing and always makes fandom a worse place for all involved. A friendly scuffle here and there is all in good fun, but as anyone who has been in fandom of late knows, it oftentimes escalates far beyond that. The final thing to address is whether or not Luther is boring. Now, of course, this is very much a mileage will vary situation. However, none of the characters on paper are boring if you actually go through what is happening to them. What makes a character more or less boring to some is how much a person can identify with them. And as noted earlier in this video, as some find it very difficult to identify with Luther, well then, obviously the viewing experience would be a bit more boring for them. Personally, I found all the characters very interesting and deserving of their own unique sympathies. It was part of what made the series so enjoyable and watchable for me. That is, of course, just my opinion. I know some people were not here for the series in any capacity. So I have to ask, are you a fan of Luther? And if so, how have you found the fandom? If you are not, feel free to also leave your comments down below, but also note that it must be reiterated that this is not a bashing space. It's not about arguing about whether a character is good or bad, but about having a discussion about character bashing and examining whether there is something to be explored that people have been pushing aside because of the rampant character bashing. Also, there is plenty of anti-Luther in the comments of the last two videos. Luther needs a little bit of love, but let's give him some love down below. Despite what he did to Vanya, we'll give him a real hug because you know what? We're better than that. We don't fake hug here. Also, let me know down below if you've ever found yourself in a similar situation where a character is either truly beloved or truly hated and you found yourself on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. If that's happened to you, what did you do? Let me know down below. This was just a quick video, a contemplation of some concepts that maybe people didn't really think about, or maybe they did let me know. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and click that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. There are, of course, more videos coming soon, so I will, of course, see you when I can, and until then, let's get to the outro. Bye -bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons, names on the side, for helping to make these videos possible. There are, as always, more videos coming soon, so until then, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.